August 24th, 2021. Where are we headed? Hi everyone, welcome back. MTG Moxman here. If you're new to my channel and you found me on YouTube, welcome aboard. I hope you enjoyed the content today. And of course, for all my regular viewers, welcome back everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day today. In today's video, we are headed back to Innistrad. The idea that we are going back to a dark plane of existence, very reminiscent of Ravenloft from Dungeons and Dragons. And of course, we just finished a D&D set, so why not go somewhere dark? Now, Wizards put this product out in this quarter on purpose, okay? Make no bones about it, they have a massive marketing team that understands exactly what they want to do at the end of a year. They've seen how things have sold in the past, in the present, and they've modeled it for the future. So they know what they want to do. Doing a two block system here at the end and giving us two at the end, they're hoping to pump out a lot more money. So when you're looking at this as a, as a new set, when we're looking at Midnight Hunt, I want you to understand something. It will not be the be all end all amazing set you're hoping it's going to be. It will be dark, it will be creepy, it'll let your imagination fly a little bit, but don't expect any powerhouse amazing cards. Even Renin 7, who is an amazing card, is not going to be a ha card into standard, okay? He can be eliminated pretty easily by a lot of cards out there. Now. A cool card like playing with fire, I gotta be honest, it's a pretty awesome card. What an improvement over shock. It's gonna be everywhere after this. The idea I can do direct damage to a player and then scry makes for a lot of happy players. When you look at cards like Infernal Grasp, great, seen that kind of card before. You see where I see it went inventive here and then they're kind of sliding down. They're doing this on, like, I wouldn't say on purpose. I don't wanna say on purpose. They're doing it in two parts because they need to stretch out a little bit more income. So expect both sets to have some cards that are watered down, some cards that are not gonna be the greatest. They're gonna make up for that in Crimson Vow when they give us that amazing box topper, which they hope will placate us uh, coming into this price hike they're gonna get us on. Because the price hike is coming. I don't think the LGSs are gonna you know, suck it up and just eat that. It's just not gonna happen. So they're going to pass it on to the consumers. As long as you're aware of this, you know what you're getting into, perfect. I mean, I myself look forward to some drafting time. Uh, I, I look forward to actually playing the pre-release, but I am not going to be buying a lot of boxes. Now, when I checked in with a lot of the stores and I, they actually got me data pretty quick, um, the pre-releases are strong. They have very high sales in the commander decks as well as the um, overall set booster. Okay, draft boxes are selling fine. Collector boxes are a little bit low, but draft boosters are hanging in there, but set boosters are the ones to beat. They are the ones that are selling very well in this particular set, which I found surprising myself considering I like draft, but that's the way it's going. Um, just so you know though, bundle packs are down across the board. Almost no one bought any from anywhere I checked. So look for those to go on sale around Christmas time. So when Wizards broke this into two parts, you realize they probably intended to be a little bit of a smaller set, but they wanted to see if they could get a little more income at the end of the end of the end of the year, right? Going into the last quarter. So they took this and they broke it into two sets. And they said we can get money from both sets, but we're gonna have to gear up the second set to draw people in. And when they added that box topper, which people saw on Amazon, right? When you saw that on the Amazon uh, video, I think a few other channels had it up. When you see that and it says right there, a box topper, um, don't think that was a mistake. A lot of people say, oh, Amazon didn't mean to do it. Yeah, Wizards meant for them to do it. Wizards wants them to do it. To make you more excited for Crimson Vow. Because a lot of people are already going to buy Midnight Hunt, have some fun with the werewolves, even if it's not going to be the best seller. Because remember, it's a watered down set. It's going to be watered down. I guarantee it. And then when we jump into Crimson Vow, people will be more psyched up which makes you want to spend that little bit extra money because, hey, we got box toppers, Midnight Hunt had a few watered down cards, and there'll be a few better cards inside Crimson Vow. No doubt about it in my mind, how I would play that out on a marketing, on a grand marketing scale, that's how I would do it. So I can see if I would think that way, why not Wizards hire up marketing guys say so I can draw more money out of people just by doing that. It makes perfect sense to me. Now, they were probably already expecting a set like Midnight Hunt to have a little bit lower sales because of Dungeons and Dragons and of course Modern Horizons 2 and they put out, don't forget, 
the convention mystery boosters. They know they've tapped people for a lot of money. So if they don't have to put a lot of thought into breaking this set up, they're not worried about losing too much money. They may do a purposely lower print run on Midnight Hunt knowing that they're expecting higher sales on Crimson because they put this cool box topper in and there'll be slightly geared up cards. I'm telling you, I just can see that that's the way it would lead up to. Wizards, when it comes to things like this, they are ingenious. They are smart. They know how to pump up that hype train to get us all on board and make us want to go down the track with them, follow down that path and see where it leads. They're very good at it. Now, they also are aware of how much people can spend on a set. They may not like it, but they realize there are limits. They're trying to push those limits every year, but they realize there are limits. They give us cool things like these amazing full art lands to try to entice us in. Think of all those little things they do. But ask yourself this before you go out and buy Midnight Hunt or Crimson Vow or spend any more hard-earned money. Let me ask you this. Do you think you have to buy a box to get them? Probably not, right? You can go ahead, pick up some of the individual lands. They're going to be in all kinds of boxes, right? Maybe not the full art foils. Maybe those only be in like the collector box. But so many get opened that they will drop significantly in value if you wanted to pick some of those cool lands up. But another thing is they bring out new full art lands in every set now, basically. So there's always going to be some cool art that is available and affordable for you. So before you jump out and say, ah, I've got to have this, and i got to buy it all. Remember, after that 90 day cooling off period, a lot of this stuff becomes a lot cheaper. I would recommend going out and enjoying a draft, having some fun with some friends, hit that pre-release up. But if you're jumping on, I've got to have four of this, four of this, four of this, you might want to wait to see what other cards come out and how they settle in and understand that Crimson Vow probably will have more stuff coming as well. It may take a little while, but if Wizard sees that they have a good return on this, a good value for what they put out, they will do it again next year. They are testing things. They're always testing to see how something works. And when something fails, like when Clash Packs didn't work anymore, when certain things fail them, the Versus decks, they will abandon it from the vaults and they'll come up with something new. Collector Edition. They just move the, the bar around. They never get rid of the bar. They just move it around trying to see what works now, what can get us on side. Because Innistrad is an amazing set. I've loved every time I've gone to it. It's always given me that creepy feel. And I can see why so many people will like to go there at the end of the year. We're coming into the fall. We're going to hit up during Halloween, the end of the year. This is going to be a great time to go to that creepy place and see what they give us. And even if it is a watered down set, you've seen the flavor text on those cards. It is creepy. It is awesome. And that's what we like to see. All they got to do is like add in some good villains, some good guys we can look forward to. The odd hero who maybe doesn't make it through the end of the story. That's what we're looking for. A good story, some good lore with some great playable cards, Wizards. You can do it. Even if it's watered down between the two sets, I expect there to be strong sales going through and it's going to carry Wizards to a record year. I hope everyone has a great day today. I would love to see what you guys think about this. Are you buying a lot of this product? Because the pre-sales seem to indicate that as we get more spoilers shown, people are kind of jumping on board. If it's not Renin 7, it's something else that is drawing you into this set. Maybe it's just that whole gothic feel. I would love to see people's questions, comments, concerns in the comments section below. And let me know, what are you going to do with Midnight Hunt? What are you going to do with Crimson Vow? That is my question to everyone. Have a great day today. This is MTG Moxman. You guys stay cool out there. And Creepy Fall is coming. Hey guys, big shout out to all my patrons out there. Thanks again everyone for that continued support. You guys are amazing and make this channel possible. I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Hit me up on those comment sections. Hit me up on the Discord. Well, you're back. You made it to the end. Congratulations. And by the way, the Dark Pack won. Okay, so I'll be taking care of that. You can stick around at some point in my videos. You will see me taking care of it. But yes, it is, it is done. It is done. It's going to be the Dark. What can I say? Don't worry, we're going to have fun with it. We're going to have fun. I mean, and the dark is creepy, and we're going to Innistrad. See, it's all creepiness filling out for October. I can't wait. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> right? So I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Uh, you know, at the end of these videos, I like to just chill out a bit and just let loose and go, yeah, uh, it was good because it was. And, and I mean, good times, right? When you see all these cool sets that Wizards has done, I can't help but be excited, but then I dread my pocketbook. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm excited, 
but at the same time, like, oh, I just can't spend the money. I got to save for some reserveless cards I got to get. It's, it's just only so much cash in the cash book. And I do believe this set will be watered down in comparison to how Crimson Vow will be. And I just love D&D too much. I couldn't pass on it. You know how it goes. Anyway, guys, have a great day today. Thanks for just chilling out with me here at the end. Feel free to hit me up. And hey, it's going to be a good time, man. I'm telling you, the dark one. Clean. Clean. All right, guys, have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm not done. All right. What? What? What can we say? I don't want to make dinner yet. The dogs are even walked and we're just chilling. And I know when I finish this video and I put this last little bit in there, I got to go do work. I have yard work to do that I keep putting off. And you're like, no, I don't want to do it. But it's okay. It's okay. Hope you guys are just chilling like I am. Another good day, man. And some days are just good. Thanks a lot for being part of my days. You guys have a great one.